thick. Purely informative video for you. No fishing in today's video, but I've got some fresh salmon eggs here and I'm going to carry them up for steelhead fishing. So I figured I'd film a video and show you guys exactly how I do this. I haven't done a video like this in a while. I get tons of questions every week asking me how I carry my bait. So I've got four cures that I use 100% of the time um, and I'm just going to show you guys those four cures exactly how I do them. I'm also going to show you guys what I do with the eggs right when they come out of the fish and all the way through making up the baits, spawn bags, and all that. So Got some coho skeins here and I've got some loose king eggs. Uh, I'm just going to talk you guys through it. I really hope that this helps you guys out, helps some of you guys that are new to the game maybe get into the bait game a little bit here. So I'm going to get right into it. So as you can clearly see we've got two different kinds of bait here. These eggs are loose uh, right out of the fish and these eggs are still held together by a membrane. So these are called skein, these are called loose eggs, loosies we like to call them. And uh, the first thing when you harvest a fish you want to make sure you bleed that fish. Um, the reason these eggs are a little darker is because there's still a little bit of blood in that membrane. A little blood's okay, but you want to absolutely minimize that, so bleeding the fish really helps. You definitely don't want blood in your eggs. So this is what we're working with. You either have skein, which requires you to scrape off the membrane if you want to tie into spawn bags, or you have loose eggs, which you can tie right into spawn bags. You can also fish these in chunks without scraping them. Um, I will link um, stick a card in for the video of how I cure up skein chunks for salmon, but for steelhead, almost 100% of the time using bags, so I'm going to show you guys how I scrape these real quick. Alright guys, very simple process here. It can get messy, but I just use a regular spoon. Some people have figured out ways to do this with uh, some wire mesh sort of deal. I haven't played with that yet, but supposedly it works good. Uh, comment if you guys have done that. I just put the membrane side up and I scrape. Uh, to separate the eggs from the membrane. It's messy, it's not perfect, but you can kind of see that's the goal. You can be as messy as you want or as slow and careful as you want. I don't think it matters too much, but the more membrane you have, the faster your bags will turn white. This is pretty good though, this is what you're looking for. Uh, nice clean eggs, it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, but it is worth it in the end. Hard to beat, scraped skein eggs, so. One more thing about the egg prep is with loose eggs, a lot of people like to river cure these, and what that means is when you get these out of the fish, you then soak them in river water for a few minutes, and then take them out of the river water, and that hardens them up. Um, that's if you want a much harder egg, a bouncy ball um, basically you could throw it off the wall and it won't break I prefer eggs that you can break that was pretty easy um, the benefit of having eggs that are bouncy balls that are hard to break is that um, it is much easier to manage it's easier to store them it's easier to tie them into bags without having them break all the time and they store better in the freezer but in my opinion I like the eggs fresh out of the fish I like that the eggs can break because when a fish bites down in your spawn bag, it, they break in its mouth, which is natural, and it just gives them all that flavor. And then you could tell if you had a bite at the end of your drift if your bag smashed. So I do not river cure my eggs. These are fresh out of the fish. It's a matter of personal preference, but anyways, that's how I prepare the eggs. Now we'll get right into the first cure. All right guys, so I'm gonna start the video off by showing how I cure with Potsky products. Uh, these are the two ones that I use. Fire brine and Braxel Fire, and I start off with these because I strongly recommend these. If you're a beginner, I strongly recommend purchasing these. It is a foolproof way to catch fish and cure your bait. So, Braxel Fire is my number one favorite cure for salmon or steelhead, and it's nice because not only does it work the best, it's easiest to do. And um, pretty much all you do is you put it on your eggs, and then you leave them in a bag overnight. The eggs will 
have some liquid sucked out of them, they'll send that liquid and then they'll reabsorb it overnight and then they'll be ready to fish. How I gauge how much cure to use is not a specific science, but I like to have my eggs laid out flat on a plate and then sprinkle it over top of them so they're all covered. That's kind of my gauge for how much Braxa fire to use. It doesn't need to be exact, but I just want to see a light sprinkling over all my bait. If you put too much on, it's not the end of the world, but you'll get what I would call sloppy eggs where there's more liquid than eggs. It doesn't all get reabsorbed, but that's how I do it. Just a light sprinkle all over and then I'll put these right into a gallon bag or I should say a port bag because I'm doing small batches here. And then these can just sit in the fridge overnight. Next day they're cured. That's it. All there is to it. This will be a cured batch of Braxa Fire eggs tomorrow morning. Uh, one recommendation with Braxa Fire is to flip it a couple times when the liquid comes out, especially if you have a bigger bag of eggs to make sure all the liquid's not at the bottom. But one other thing to say when you're storing eggs and curing eggs, I love doing them in small batches like this because I'll freeze this and I can thaw this and this is enough eggs for one or two days of fishing. Uh, it's a matter of convenience for me so that's why I'll be doing these in small batches and it also makes it easier for me to show you all of them. But anyways, that's Braxa Fire Cure done right there. Tomorrow morning that'll be ready to fish and they work, I promise you that. Alright guys, so this is Fire Brine. This is just as easy, just as effective. Uh, it's just nice to have a different cure. Uh, you never know what they're going to be hitting. Um, and I always like having different stuff with me, so uh, just another easy one to make up a bunch of. And the way I do this is I use a cup or a container, and I simply put in however many eggs I want to cure, and then I'm going to pour in this fire brine, and I'm just going to pour in enough to cover all the bait. And that should get fully reabsorbed, it'll pump these things up, make them really firm and really awesome spilling baits. That's all there is to it. I actually put a little too much in there, uh, but that's all right. And you can either just leave it in the cup or leave it in whatever container it is. They'll be ready to fish the next day, or I'm going to put them in a bag because I freeze my bait in bags, which I'll talk about later. But I know that I have the right amount. Just enough to cover the bait. That's all you need. That's another cure done. In the morning, I'll be ready to fish. All right, so the third cure is another one where I use a plate to kind of determine how much to use. Same as the Braxa fire. Um, I'd never measure anything when I'm curing. So I use the plate as a reference uh, just to make sure that everything's covered with a little bit of cure because that's all I'm looking for. So instead of using Braxa fire, I'm using straight Mule Team Borax, uh, which will preserve the eggs. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the Braxa fire. Just make sure they're all covered. And that should be enough to preserve these eggs. Then these ones, you can fish just plain Borax eggs. That's not something that I do though. I like a nice sweet egg. Uh, and this is kind of like the wild card cure that I use when nothing else is working. This is orange jello. And I think it doesn't matter what flavor jello you use, it's just color mainly. Uh, I think they probably all or a similar effect on the fish, but I like orange because I like the color orange on my bait. Sprinkle it right over top. And these will smell just like orange, fruity eggs, and um, they work really good. Still, I love a sweet flavor, so. This is pretty much just gonna be like the other ones. I'm just gonna bag them up, and these will be ready to fish in the morning. So, one recommendation if you're gonna do this is use paper plates because then you can fold them. Makes it much easier to transfer into a Ziploc bag. Oh. Again, I repeat, use a paper plate. And if you're gonna use plates like I'm doing, it makes it so much easier. You just fold that in half and just drop everything right in the bag. Um, another thing, I have gloves on the table, nitrile gloves, which I was gonna use as a recommendation. Uh, keep your hands clean. I don't really worry about human scent getting on the bait, but uh, some of the stuff, especially Brax and Fire, it's really hard on your hands. So I would recommend wearing gloves when you're working with it, but I just kind of jump right into it. So anyways, uh, those are just some things that make the process a little more efficient, a little more clean. Either way, we're going to have some good work in Jell-O eggs out of this batch here. I'm a huge believer in having different stuff to try. I like having two, three, or four cures on me when I'm on the river. So this is just another nice one to bait cycle with. And it's another easy one to do. Just like that, these baits will be ready in the morning. And 
The last cure that I like to do, the sugar salt cure, is the one that's a little bit more complicated. So that'll take some time to explain. It's more of a brine than a cure, so I'm gonna get right into it next. Gonna have to prep up some brine, but all you need, salt and brown sugar. You can use white sugar too, um, and there's a debate about whether you use iodized salt or not. I'm going with non-iodized just in case. Who knows if it matters or not. But anyways, gonna get these brines mixed up, show you guys how I do it. All right guys, so for the sugar salt brine, I've just got a bowl of room temperature tap water here. Some people don't like to use tap water, but I don't think it could possibly matter. Um, and I'm just adding salt to it. And I'm pretty much gonna add as much salt as I can dissolve in this bowl of water. No measurements, no exact science to this, um, but it's always worked out for me, so. I know a lot of people want an exact recipe, but it's not what you're gonna get from me. You don't want a bunch of granules in there because you don't want the salt to stick on the eggs. You just want the salt to be on the eggs for a little bit, and then we're gonna take them out of the salt. So, gonna add my loose eggs. Basically, they're gonna sink to the bottom, and then pretty soon here, they are gonna start floating up. And once they start floating up, you'll notice, um, basically, the eggs will shrivel up because the salt is drawing water out of them, which is what we want because basically we're gonna replace that water with sugar water. So I'm gonna let these sit here for a little bit and I'm gonna keep an eye on them too because if you leave them in the salt for too long and your salt mixture is too high, they will shrivel up to the point where they won't come back. So um, I'm gonna keep an eye on those, but real quick, I'm gonna get some brown sugar and water going. I have two cups of tap water here just to make sure that I get enough. Um, pretty much doing the same thing as the salt. I'm dissolving as much sugar as I can into the water. I don't want there to be a bunch of granules. Uh, I just want it to be saturated with sugar. Nice uh, syrupy mixture. So I'm gonna stir those up real good. Meanwhile, I'm keeping an eye on my brine. All right, so here we are at the point where I'm about to take these things out of the salt water brine. You can see that they're still pretty round, but they're definitely not perfect circles. So I don't want to let them get too far past that point. I'm going to get them out of salt water and make sure they're not covered in salt. All right, so we got our eggs after their little salt bath there. And now I'm just going to cover them just enough so that everything's covered. And that amount right there should get reabsorbed by morning. And it won't be a soup anymore, it'll just be perfect round eggs filled with sugar. This is one of my favorite cures. This is definitely worth the effort, worth the mess, in my opinion. And I'm just going to toss this into Ziplocs just like the rest of them. And just like that, real quick, we've got four cures prepped up. Alright guys, so one thing to talk about is you want to label your bait. And um, you don't want to leave your bait in the fridge forever. Even if it's cured, if you leave your bait in the fridge, it doesn't last for months and months. So I'm going to label this wax will fire and I'm just going to put the date, which is October 10th, I think. And I will freeze bait just like this. Like I said, I like to freeze it in small batches. So that's why I put small batches in bags. And I use Ziploc freezer bags and I have pretty good luck uh, just tossing these in the freezer for up to a year and pulling them out. They thaw pretty good. If you can vacuum seal your bait, that is definitely a better method. But this is how I do it. It's quick. It's easy and usually the eggs come out of the freezer just fine. So I don't like to leave my bait in the fridge for more than two weeks. Uh, everyone has a different preference, but for me, if I'm not gonna use it within a week or so, I'm putting it in the freezer. So that is my system right there. Um, I guess the next thing to show you guys is how to make baits out of these. All right guys, so the whole goal of this process has been to end up with some nice cured up loose eggs and tie them into spawn bags, which is the bait. And all you need for this is you need spawn net, and you need magic thread, which both of you can get from Atlas Mike's. Um, and I like to have a variety of colors, and I brought out some colors here to show you guys what I use. If I could only have one, it would absolutely 100% be pink. Uh, it's just a confidence color, and it can work in all conditions. So pink is my go-to. Um, chartreuse is awesome for stained, dirty water. And um, another one to think about is blue, which is kind of a strange color, but one theory I've heard is that in the fall, when there's tons of leaves in the water, Blue stands out against the leaves where 
these don't. So I've had good luck with blue in the fall and it's just nice to have lots of different colors to throw. But I'm gonna tie up a bunch of pig bags and I'm just gonna show you guys my system because everyone has a different system for this. Uh, but what I do is I just lay out as many squares as I can. Um, if I have a big table, I can cover it in newspaper. I'll lay out all 50 squares and I just kind of do this one step at a time. So first, lay out all the squares, and the next thing I'll do is I'll just spoon the eggs right into them. Grab a spoonful of bait and pop them in. Um, the size of your bag is obviously going to depend on how many eggs you drop in. Um, I fish lots of really small bags for clear water, and then obviously if the water's dirty, you might want some bigger bags. Anything from dime to quarter size bags can work, and when you're working with king eggs, that's usually going to be a range of like around 5x to 10x. I like to lean on the smaller side. So, there we go. And then I just go through and I wrap each one. Grab the corners. Give it a couple turns in my hand. Get it nice and round. And I grab the magic thread. I do three wraps and pull. And then I do three wraps with the other end. Pull. And then perfect bait there and I'll go through and I'll do all the wrapping and I'll cut them at the end. Then just carefully, carefully grab them. If you've got bouncy ball eggs you don't have to be careful. But I like to just use nice soft eggs and I like to form them into as round of a shape as I can. Be real gentle with them. Just like that. Once you got them all wrapped up it's as easy as just grabbing them chopping off all this extra. I'm going to use a nice sharp pair of scissors. These aren't the best here. And you want to cut it nice and close but not too close or you'll compromise your wraps and you'll reel in and you'll just have netting. Your bag will be busted open. This is what it's all about right here. Awesome fresh baits. Perfect for steelhead and it's worth all the effort. All right guys, that's pretty much all the tips I've got for you. This is just pretty much what I've learned over the last five or six years of playing with bait. I'm not an expert by any means, but this stuff has worked out for me. As you can see, I've got a big mess to clean up here. This is messy, it's time consuming. Uh, it takes up effort and time, but it is totally worth the effort in my opinion. This is some of the best bait that you can use for steelhead and salmon is fresh eggs. So uh, I hope this video helped some of you guys out and I hope you guys catch some fish on bait. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.